Hey, welcome back to the channel. I have been um, traveling a little and just really super busy. I mean, we all go through that, right? So um, now I am uh, in the shop today and I'm back at uh, the uh, plane. If you remember where we left off the last time, we had just gotten this, um, gotten this leading edge piece attached and uh, got everything squared up and put in place here and now um, I have a piece of plywood for the leading edge um, uh, soaking in the tub uh, outside and that's been in there for uh, for a couple hours I'll leave it in there for another two three hours and then while that's happening um, what I've got to do here is I'm just gonna go around and pull a bunch of staples that I have I've got some here and here and where I stapled these together, uh, the eighth inch and the quarter inch uh, here, and I've got some here. And then I'm gonna just prepare uh, off this, take my wing off and move some things around. Uh, and then get this, uh, I need to get the polyurethane on uh, all of this interior structure and get that ready for, uh, get that ready for sheeting, just like I did on the, uh, on the other wing and then the other thing I can do um, before uh, once that goes into the form right there uh, the leading edge goes in the form I'll have that in there for about 24 hours or I think last time I pulled one out maybe maybe even 12 hours it's pretty dry right now so I'm sure it's gonna um, it's gonna dry pretty quickly and once I can uh, get that out of the form, then I can start, I'll get the second one in right away while I epoxy the first one on and so on and so on. So, but I've also got the, um, some work I can do in the root section here. I've got the, uh, the supports for the eighth inch plywood underneath the fuel tank that I can, that I can put in and I've got the trailing edge to put on. Uh, so I do have plenty to do while I'm working through this leading edge, but the order for today is I'm going to pull some staples. I'm going to uh, get this all uh, verithaned and uh, get it ready, get first piece of plywood in the form, and maybe get the trailing edge on, which would be really sweet. So, all right.
All right, in case you didn't see the last video, uh, when I put the trailing edge on, I'll show you what I was doing at that time. Um, just so you understand the process here that I'm going through. Uh, I, uh, I have a, a square line that's square to this uh, uh, stop on the back side of the table um, here. And so this part of the wing is, is all lined up with it. And then when you get here, this aileron end actually sets back a sixteenth of an inch away from uh, the eighth inch material, which is for the bearing to fit in and everything. So what I've done is this board um, that I've clamped in place here is also on that square line. And then this sixteenth of an inch shim puts this, in this, this uh, end of the aileron piece here where it needs to be. And then you can see that then the trailing edge piece just slides in against that stop. And then I know that I'm nice and square. And then I actually also sight it and checked it with a, a straight board um, in a straight edge just to make sure that everything is square here. And then when we get to the other end, all right, so now that it's blocked at the other end, you can see where the, uh, uh, where on this end the, the, the bow is in this here. So now I just pull this over against the trailing edge piece and then what we're going to check for is uh, we're going to check that this is now square and if this works out like the other wing did um, I just kept having to remove a tiny bit off of the trailing edge piece until this moved over enough to be uh, completely square with the leading edge so um, yeah so I'll get to I'll get I'll get something and work on that and we'll get that all uh, get that all squared away square squared away <laughs> all right all right that was actually really easy because it fit right the first time um, the other thing that happened on the other wing and the same thing uh, on this one is that uh, some of the, there's a little bit of a gap in some of the ribs. And uh, I'm not exactly sure where they came from, but it, uh, it exists. So we just, uh, we just deal with it. So I gotta make sure that my trailing edge, because this is square. Um, so I just have to make sure my trailing edge is um, against that and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill this little bit this little gap here by sanding down a piece of quarter inch material until it fits nicely in there um, then I'll cut it off you know what I'm doing here is really at the heart and soul of the Experimental Aircraft Association those of us who are members and we do this um, we are not professionals we we build airplanes uh, from plans or from kits and what's interesting is there are standards as it associates to wood quality and methodology of doing certain things scarf joints things like that you know there's a there's a handful of things to learn but beyond that if you pull three or four of us together and talk about a process like how do you get from here to here good chances are uh, the three or four of us are going to take a very different path but arrive at the same point so um if you're new to my channel and you're watching this, I just thought this was a good time to just uh, take a quick pause and just let you know that, you know, the methods and things that you see here, uh, you see me do, um, these are my methods. And, and um, I just want to uh, want everyone to be aware of that. Uh, um, you know, I, if you were going to build one yourself and you've never built an airplane for before, um, you know, my recommendation is, is to um, contact the, EAA, become a member, get some of the publications that if you're going to build a wood aircraft, they have a great book on, on building wood aircraft and how to accomplish that. And then just study and learn and, and figure out your ways of doing things. I'm not saying mine are the only way or they're even necessarily the absolute right way, um, but they're acceptable for me and I'm the one who has to get in this thing and fly. So um, I just thought I would just say this, you know, use your own judgment don't necessarily follow me to the letter. Um, these are not 
I'm not a professional builder. These are my ideas. So yeah, enough about that. That's just uh, something that's important, I think, that for anyone who to understand who's never done this before. Um, I'm not giving a how-to step-by-step here as the absolute way to accomplish things. There are lots of paths. And um, yeah, so I'm going to, um, I'm going to get busy and um, get these little slivers of wood sanded down and put in place. So I'm working toward epoxying this trailing edge uh, on. And um, yeah, let me keep going here. All right, so um, somewhere along that last process, the, the camera actually, the battery died on the camera, so I didn't actually get to um, finish that. But um, what I ended up uh, doing was I went ahead and put in the next two uh, piece cross uh, braces here that are basically the support uh, for the fuel tank. So, um, and, and just as before, where they crossed over, I just had to eliminate a little bit of this uh, gusset and the gusset back here so I could get it to fit the way I wanted it to. Um, my dimensions are close to what the plans show. I Mine are altered just slightly, not much. I still have a nice even spacing between these bays, so I'm not really concerned about anything there. And then I got the, uh, the trailing edge. Um, I got all the gussets in place here, so that's really good and this clamp here is just holding the trailing edge tight against the uh, against the work surface and this one and one more down here these were all good uh, so that's setting up and I uh, I'm gonna grab my uh, plywood out of the form I'm sorry out of the water and put it in the form uh, before I go and then uh and then that'll be it for today so uh thanks so much for uh hanging out with me and um 
checking out my progress here. I do appreciate it. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and the little bell notification so you don't miss anything. And uh, as always, I'll catch you later.